Now, another tool of the trade that only goes back amazingly in the NHL 50 years. Jacques Plante donned his first in 1959. Here's Cheryl Rosebush with a neat story. When I was a kid, all the goalies were wearing masks like this. There was something a little bit mystical about them, I think, because um, at the time they were the superheroes in the comic books, the superheroes wore the mask, so the goalie is a hero because he's the one wearing the mask. They were always a curiosity to me, so I thought maybe this would give me an idea of what they were actually like to have a replica right in my hands. I'm Mac Poulain, and I make vintage goalie mask replicas. It all begins with the molds. I've got about 20 different molds that allow me to do close to 25 different styles of masks. Use a mold release to make sure that the fiberglass mask doesn't stick to the mold. This is an epoxy resin. So now we're mixing uh, the resin with the hardener. We will coat the entire mold with a good coat of resin. After that, I'm gonna take a sheet of fiberglass and apply it on top, form it to the, exactly the shape of the mold. You saturate the material with the resin. You apply as many layers of the material as you need to get the thickness you want. I think the first game I saw was Ken Dryden against Roger Crozier's Montreal against Buffalo, and uh, I mean the two goalies stood out. The hockey's changed. It's still an exciting game. It's still fun to watch, but it's changed. At the time, uh, it wasn't so terribly technical. Hockey was still something of a a haphazard game. In those days, you had more breakaways, you had more you know, things happening out of the blue. It's, it was a different form of exciting. And you look at these things that are all handmade, I think they're a good reflection of that time because they're not super precise. So we start 1959, Jacques Plante wore a model like uh, this mask as of November 1959 for the Montreal Canadiens. In the 1960s, Jerry Cheever started putting stitches on his mask, showing where he, he, he would have gotten hit if he hadn't been wearing a mask. In 1970, he went to a slightly larger model that's very similar. If I had to make a rough estimate, I'd say I'd, make, I'd be making around 160 per year. They started at 225, 225, and they can go up to $600 if it's a custom-fitted thing that somebody's actually going to use in the game. And once this is hardened, it's like a shell, it's a very hard shell, then you mark out uh, according to reference photos of the old masks, you mark out uh, where you're going to cut. Once you have your markings, you drill holes. You start cutting and filing. And several hours later, once everything is cleaned up and re-primed and re-sanded and repainted, we have our Tony Esposito replica masks, a thing of beauty. So the reason I love these so much is like, I mean, you look at this and it's... It's a face, but it's not a face. It takes a face and it turns it into a character, and the character doesn't change. It's partly something that it's, it's, that's gone forever. It's partly something that's um, it's never going to come back. It's, it's, uh, it's a memory. With the man who runs the NHL alumni, Mark Napier, you have a favorite goalie mask, Mark? Probably uh, Jerry Cheevers was pretty cool, but uh, Jilly Gratton's was pretty good, too. He thought it used to scare people, that... Uh, that lion mask he had, but uh, I don't think it scared too many people.